Hello everybody, my name is Martin Hadic, I'm microbiologist and infectious disease specialist and actually tick-burn encephalitis is my favorite topic. So I would like to invite you to take a short tour with me on this kind of disease. First question, what is TBE? Well, tick-borne encephalitis is an infectious disease affecting the central nervous system. Tick-borne in this way illustrates the most frequent way of transmission and encephalitis indicates that it is an inflammation of the brains. Where can you get TBE? The endemic area of TBE stretches from France in the west to Japan in the east and from Scandinavia and Russia in the north to Greece and southern China in the south. So this is quite a huge area uh, the, which is covered by um, this disease. Uh, in Europe, uh, there are 10 to 15,000 notified cases, clinical cases each year, and we do have an increasing number of endemic countries uh, with an increasing incidence. Um, uh, in the recent past, Italy, the Netherlands, and in 2019, the UK joined the group of endemic countries. What causes TBE? TBE is a viral disease. The agent belongs to the so-called flavivirus group. And there are other viruses of this group which you might be familiar with, like yellow fever virus, the dengue viruses, the Japanese encephalitis virus, the West Nile virus, or the Zika virus. The TBE virus uh, has the typical structure of a flavivirus. Uh, how is it transmitted? Well, there are several ways of transmission. The most common are tick bites by so-called questing ticks, which are uh, most common in Europe, in contrast to hunting ticks, which you usually find in the tropics. In addition, the virus may also be transmitted by the consumption of unpasteurized dairy products like milk and cheese and from infected animals like uh, goat, sheep, or cow, and uh, by the way of a laboratory infection. There are rare reports that recently infected lactating women might also infect their babies via breastfeeding. So the most important ways of transmission, tick bites, unpasteurized dairy products, laboratory infections. Up till now, there is no hint that insects may also transmit this infectious agent. Um, what is the risk? What are so-called exposure-prone activities? Well, the highest risk are unprotected outdoor activities in endemic regions during the high season of tick bites. In the past, this was mostly due to uh, working uh, to the work of, local, of the local population, working outdoors, like in agriculture or forestry, uh, meanwhile, this risk has shifted to leisure time activities. Climate change also has an impact on transmission zones. They move to high higher altitudes as well as on the tick bite season. Um, depending on the region, which means depending on moisture and temperature, they may be extended and in some endemic areas, tick bites meanwhile occur all year round. Uh, if we talk about uh, risks, we have to consider that lifestyle has changed and modern lifestyle might lead to virus exposure. Uh, people in industrialized countries increasingly tend or pretend to pursue a healthy lifestyle, uh, which is mirrored by healthy food, outdoor sports, less stress. Increased leisure time is filled with outdoor activities like hiking, cycling, jogging, fishing, which is also done by retired people. Traditional indoor sports like squash, badminton or tennis are partly replaced by exposure prone activities like golf, disc golf or geocaching. And some, of, some part of modern lifestyle may also be that people prefer natural food to nutrition provided by the food industry. What are the symptoms of TBE? Most infected people show no or only little symptoms like low fever. In these cases, the brains are not affected. In a second phase, some may get an infection of the brains, which even might extend to the spinal cord. 
These patients develop symptoms like nausea, headache, meningism, which is stiff neck, and depending on the sites of inflammation, neurologic damage, resulting in maybe sometimes even permanent neurologic dysfunction. The typical course of infection is biphasic. So after the tick bite, roughly one to two weeks after it, there may be an uncharacteristic phase, which was called summer flu, and after an, another asymptomatic interval, there might be neurologic disease, which leads patients to hospitals. The clinical presentation um, depends on the organ structure um, affected. In roughly half of the cases, there will be meningitis with headache, fever, and the neck stiffness. Uh, but uh, in roughly 40%, this might also be um, it might also affect the brains itself. So uh, additionally, there may be impaired consciousness and motions, palsy, delirium, breathing difficulties, and the disease might even affect uh, the spinal cord, uh, which means uh, that you have an even worse course of disease. How do you diagnose TBE? Well, based on the history, the clinical examination and exposure, doctors should be aware of TBE. And this is the most important part because it's a highly neglected disease, especially in non-endemic areas. Checking the blood count may help to raise the suspect of a viral infection. And there are specific lab tests on blood and or the cerebrospinal fluid, which is the fluid that embeds the brain and the spinal cord. And this might help to confirm or exclude the suspicion of TBE. Serology is not as good due to the possibility of cross-reactions with other fibrosis as compared to uh, PCR, which means polymerase chain reaction, where you detect genetic material of the vi virus, uh, which is highly sensitive and highly specific. Anyhow, if you do a blood, uh, a regular blood check, Early, the proof of early stage antibodies, which are called IgM, um, uh, are mostly, uh, this is mostly indicative of a recent infection with the TBE virus. Of course, the interpretation and the reading of the results is a quite complex thing, so you should leave it up uh, to uh, specialized laboratories. <clears throat> How is TBE treated? Well, there is no real antiviral uh, treatment uh, against TBE. So th basically there is no chance to modify the course of the disease. Treatment is limited just to uh, diminish the symptoms like nausea, fever or pain. Uh, as with other viral infections, there is no means to impact the outcome of TBE. So what is the outcome? Well, already in 2004, the WHO stated that TBE is a serious cause of acute central nervous system, system disease, which may result in death or long-term neurological sequelae in 35 up to 58% of patients. And we have to consider the so-called case fatality rate, which indicates the percentage of those who will die to the disease. And this is in between 0.5 to 2% and maybe even up to 10% in certain areas of Russia. What is for sure is that severe courses are more frequent in elderly. So with increasing age, immune functions decrease, and above the, year, uh, the age of 15 years, 50, five zero, above the age of 50 years, symptomatic infection is more likely there are more frequently severe infections, and the case fatality rate may be 15 times higher than in younger patients. How can TBE be prevented? Well, the first thing is behavior. For instance, the use of special clothing, light colors, closed shoes, trousers covering the legs, the application of repellents, like DEET 30 to 50 percent, or Icaridine 20 percent on the skin, permethrin on the clothing. Behavior nature, avoid narrow paths, walk in the middle of footpaths, avoid contact to bushes, brushwood, shrubbery, and even lying in high grass might put you at risk. And do a post-exposure check immediately, which means 
check your body, check your partner, check your children after exposure. And if you find ticks, remove them early, rapid, in an atraumatic way. For instance, before taking the shower. Um, there are several parts of the body which are most likely for uh, tick bites, which are the knees, under the arms, for instance, the shoulders, or even the head, for instance, especially in children, behind the ears. Uh, if you remove ticks, use fine uh, tipped tweezers. Uh, there are special, look like credit cards, uh, tick removal cards, uh, where you have notched parts uh, so that you can place the card in between the tick and the skin and remove the skin by these means. Avoid to compress the tick um, and uh, also avoid old remedies like glues or super glue, uh, immersion oil, nail polish, etc. Um, just stick to the recommendations I gave you. And there is vaccination. There are licensed, safe, well-tolerated and highly effective vaccines on the market in a pediatric as well as in an adult, adult formulation. Uh, these vaccines are available in most parts of Europe and recently also in Israel, and they can be ordered in some other countries on an individual basis. Uh, two shots two weeks apart are necessary to provide short-term protection. Uh, a third shot after one year confers immunity for at least three years. The vaccination schedules, especially the booster shots, might differ from country to country. You could read up the licensed uh, products in the internet. Um, and uh, this is also true for the vaccination schemes. Um, uh, but I would recommend that you counsel your doctor, um, a healthcare center or a vaccination center or a travel medicine center where you get the correct information and sometimes you can also have access uh, to the vaccines. <clears throat> Something important to mention is that the uh, vaccines licensed in Western Europe are all inactivated vaccines, which, which means that you uh, are not at risk to get the disease via the vaccination. So based on that, um, I really want to thank you that you took this short tour to tick-borne encephalitis with me. Um, stay safe, protect your brains. It's the most important part of your body. Thank you very much.